I'm Megid Jimberle. Being a Megid means I'm a Jewish spiritual storyteller, an inspirational teacher. I have a story for you today from a different tradition, as many of my stories are. This time it's from the Buddhist tradition. It's known by many as the Gray Parrot. I'd like to share my version of it with you today. There once lived a gray parrot in a forest with many, many other animals. All the kinds of animals that one has in a rich, robust forest. And they lived their lives in balance. Everything was going pretty much as it should. Until one day, terrible forest fire broke out. Oh, it was huge, it was hot, it was deadly. All the animals fl fled from the forest. There's a river not far away, and their idea was they would all get to the other side of the river and they would be safe there. So the lions, the foxes, the birds, they all fled. Now, as the gray parrot flew towards the river, she could hear the screams of the trees as they burned. And she knew something had to be done. So when she reached the river, she dove into the water, came back up, drops of water on her wings and her back, and she flew back towards the forest, shook herself off, a few drops fell into the hot fire, and then back to the river. She pleaded with the other animals to help, but they wouldn't. So she dove back in again and back out. More water on her wings, more water on her back. Flew towards the fire, shook herself off, a few drops. The fire was raging. Back to the river, with each dive, she grew wearier and wearier. The water was heavy. It was hard to fly. It didn't seem to be making much of a difference, but she flew anyway. Now, as this is going on, the gods in the heavens look down to see this spectacle this foolish gray parrot flying back and forth, putting her life in peril with each trip. They laughed. They thought it was the stupidest thing they'd ever heard. But the head of the gods was curious. And so he transformed himself into an eagle and flew down. and flew alongside the parrot just before she dove into the river. And he asked her, Parrot, Parrot, why, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm saving the trees. What do you mean, saving the trees? You, you, you can't carry enough water to save the trees. Well, I've got to do something. And with that, she dove into the river and came back up and headed back towards the huge fire growing hotter and more fierce at every moment. Well, the eagle flew alongside her, and he asked her again, Why are you doing this? She didn't answer. Finally, as she got closer and closer to the fire, the heat of the fire was so great that the eagle couldn't take it anymore and soared upwards. The little parrot continued on and shook her wings and headed back the river. And as the Lord of the gods looked down over this spectacle, he began to weep. He began to weep and weep, and his tears fell down on the forest. And they extinguished the fire. And one drop fell on the parrot and gave her the beautiful plumage 
that we see today. Now, there are many kinds of stories like this. This one for me is unique because it's not like the story of the fellow who throws a starfish back into the sea and says, well, it mattered for that starfish. It's not that one does things that are seemingly without possibility of change simply because it's the right thing to do. This takes that one step further. It says to me, we never know who we're going to impact with our behavior. Yes, that parent by herself would never have been out, able to put out the fire. And she tried to recruit the animals, but they didn't do anything. But it was her persistence that drew the attention of those who could make a change. And they did. And so when we face these problems that seem insurmountable, and certainly are for any individual, I think we have to consider that we don't know all the effects of our good behavior. We shouldn't give up just because we can't see how we can win ourselves.